welcome to Smarts and Crafts. This week, we'll be sitting down with Superintendent, Dr. Provost, and we will be making gingerbread houses. Have you ever made a gingerbread house before? I've made many gingerbread houses um, as part of an annual tradition every Christmas Eve. My siblings and I and our families uh, engage in a very competitive round of uh, gingerbread house construction. Um, it's always judged by my mother and she always seems to pick my brother, although I don't think he builds the best houses. He is the baby. I think there's some partiality there. <laughs> so Dr. Provost, what do you like to do outside of your job? I'll say that the most satisfying part of my day most days is walking my dog. Uh, I get up at five o'clock every day, either by the alarm or by Scout um, coming over to the side of my bed and putting her paw up on my shoulder. And then I have a nice half an hour walk with her in the morning before I start my day. And it's um, a great time for me to just reflect, get ready for the day, and just have a, a, a relaxing time. This, at this time of year, it's really, really especially satisfying because all the stars are out. Orion is, is it's actually starting to set at this time of year. Um, but to be out there in the morning when the neighborhood is quiet, just me and the dog and the stars is um, it's really, really a great way to start the day. So have you always known you wanted to be a superintendent? Uh, no, that is definitely not the case. <laughs> I began working as a paraprofessional in a program for behaviorally involved students. It was actually in Amherst. Um, it was the early 90s, which was a time of economic recession, and so there weren't a lot of teaching jobs available. Uh, I worked for the Department of Youth Services in a number of programs, Grafton Secure Treatment, uh, Grafton Secure Detention, the SHARP program, Harvard House, Brighton Treatment Center, uh, all within the context of uh, services to, to adjudicated youth. And it was after that, um, which was probably a period of about four years in my career, that I um, first taught in a traditional public school. Um, and I was teaching English, I was teaching seventh and ninth grade. It was actually while I was there that I first um, developed an interest in administration. After starting there, I um, went back to school, went to UMass. I actually have my UMass tie on today. Uh, went, went to UMass and um, was trained as a principal. There was a unique opportunity available at UMass. They asked me to stay on to uh, do a doctoral program, which I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to do because there was a lot of student, um, a, a lot of student investment in terms of tuition in earning the principal's licensure, and um, it. After years of working as a paraprofessional and working in DYS, I felt like the responsible thing to do might be to go work as a principal somewhere. I feel like if I had been a math teacher instead of an English teacher, I'd know how to arrange that chip. <laughs> I was a special ed director in Aguam for a while, and it was there that I met um, a superintendent who really sort of inspired me to start heading down the, the pathway of becoming superintendent. Well, should we start decorating yes. them? I'm going to start on these gumdrops here. What were you like when you were in high school? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I want to plead the fifth to a certain extent um, <laughs> because uh, I would say that in high school, I was like many students who um, didn't like being in school all the time. Um, I did like English, which is why I became an English teacher. Um, but I had some struggles with courses, particularly chemistry. I remember that being a tough one for me. Did did form a, a wonderful group of friends when I was in high school, though, who I still 
um, still connect with on an annual basis. Um, we get together every January on Martin Luther King Jr. weekend and uh, play this board game that we started playing when we were in high school called Axes and Allies, which is a World War II oh, simulation yeah. game. <laughs> what is the role of a superintendent? So there are many different things that the superintendent does in the course of a day. Um, there is the Department of Education provides this checklist uh, for superintendents that um, describe all the different things that have to be done um, in order to keep a district running on an annual basis. The checklist has, I think, 139 items on it. Um, but what I enjoy isn't anything on the checklist. What I uh, what I really enjoy most of all is working with the other leaders in the district. Would you consider yourself an outdoorsy person? Uh, I would have to say no. Uh, I do spend most of my weekends outside if the weather is nice, um, but my job of course has me indoors all the time. Um, and so I, I guess I, I, I wouldn't say that I qualify as outdoorsy. <laughs> Do you have any favorite events that the school puts on that you like to go to? I think my favorite, favorite events to attend are the football games, um, especially early in the season before it gets too cold. Yeah. <laughs> it, can, it can get to be a little bit intense uh, by the end of the season. But I just think it's a great, a great time when um, all sorts of people come out um, and you can have conversations with students, you can have conversations with parents in a relaxed atmosphere. I enjoy going to the first day of kindergarten, um, sort of on the opposite end of things. <laughs> um, it's really interesting to see parents say goodbye to their kids for the first time, um, which it can be kind of a traumatic event for parents and for kids, even though they're only going to be apart for six hours. Um, the first time they do it, it's challenging. Um, and so just being there to observe that and see the whole range of emotions is, um, is fun. I like going to our summer program. Um, we have actually two summer programs, one at Bridge Street and one at the middle school. And that's an opportunity to see students and teachers in a more relaxed setting. Um, so I like that. Uh, of course, I like attending the musicals. I love graduation. Um, I, I'll say you know, of all the districts I've worked in, um, this is probably the, the best graduation district because um, oh, it's the most student-centered um, and also the easiest one for me to to work if you will is superintendent because I don't have to come up with a speech. Here, do you want any I'll of these? I'll some stars. Oh, definitely the stars. I need, I need Little some, things are going everywhere. I need some more frosting too. I don't even know where the... <laughs> Should I got like knives? Yeah. <laughs> That's not a good idea. Yeah, I, I don't think this is the recommended technique. <laughs> If you weren't a superintendent, what would you likely want to do? I think I'd like to be a dog sled captain. Um, there, uh, there is this sport called dry land mushing, which um, is for people around here who don't have the type of snow that yeah. really supports um, a full, full-fledged dog team. Um, it's usually done by modifying a bicycle or a scooter. And I used to do that with my old dog, um, who's unfortunately no longer with us. But I had a lot of fun with that. And uh, in my mind, I was on the tundra. Um, so I don't imagine that's a very lucrative career. <laughs> but I think of it as sort of extending that half an hour walk with my dog in the morning into yeah. like the thing you do all day long. Do you have anything interesting about yourself that people might not know? People may not know that um, I uh, used to I used to be into FMDXing, which is yeah. which, uh, custom building antennas to receive FM radio stations from a long way away. Um, so you can actually tune in an antenna to pick up a specific frequency rather than the general purpose antennas that you have now that really are not that efficient. I think it's kind of funny that students actually tweet at you. I didn't know that. 
request a snow day. Do you have anything to say about that? It's completely ineffective. I'll just say that. I, um, it, it's not a it's not a vote, and you know, I actually don't care how many tweets I get requesting a snow day. Um, however, it is nice to be engaged with students. I, I just don't want anyone thinking that my decision about whether or not to have a snow day will depend upon the quality of their tweets. But um, definitely keep them coming. I find them amusing. <laughs> um, just keep them, you know, keep them polite, keep them respectful, and uh, we can have a good time with it. What was the funniest tweet that you've ever received regarding a snow day? Uh, so I think it, it actually was uh, a series of tweets. Um, this was probably two years ago when I had uh, called for a two hour delay. Um, right after I called for the two hour delay, I went out and shoveled my driveway. And a student um, tweeted me a picture of his driveway with all of the snow out it and, and said that, um, so that we needed to have, we need to go to a full cancellation because the snow hadn't been removed yet. And so I just asked him why he was lazy, <laughs> showed him that my driveway had been cleared by me. Um, and so I think that probably was the, the funniest uh, tweet exchange because he did admit that there really was no reason for him not to shovel the driveway. Um, and so I, I think that probably is my favorite one, although there have been many. Hello, this is John Provost, Superintendent of Schools, calling with an important weather-related announcement. All Northampton gingerbread schools will be closed today due to inclement weather. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, Dr. Provost, for being on our show. We had a lot of fun. It was my pleasure to be here. I think we created a wonderful gingerbread house and I just wanna wish everybody a very restful and safe break. I'll see you in 2020.